SpaceX has started launching upgraded Starlink satellites fitted with laser links to help drive down latency on the internet network. The upgraded satellites promise to help drive down latency over the Starlink network. All future satellites will contain the laser link technology. The company sent up 51 new Starlink satellites into orbit, describing them as a huge leap forward for the satellite broadband system. The goal is to enable future Starlink satellites to transmit information to one another while in orbit using the optical space lasers. This means Starlink wouldn't need to constantly fetch internet data from ground stations on Earth, thus cutting down on latency. So what is this new laser communication technology that Starlink is studded with? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to Elon Musk Daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video and hit the notification bell to get updated with technology trends. We bring you the video related to new laser technology assimilated in the Starlink satellites and how it will affect the internet service provided to the users worldwide. So stick till the end. Starlink is a SpaceX satellite internet project, which aims to launch nearly 12,000 satellites into low Earth orbit, where they can provide broadband internet coverage to people on the ground, notably those in remote and rural areas where traditional internet infrastructure is lacking. According to CEO Elon Musk, Laser links in orbit can reduce long-distance latency by as much as 50% due to higher speed of light in vacuum and shorter path than undersea fiber. He's aiming for Starlink to achieve a latency under 20 milliseconds. Lately, SpaceX has been delaying all Starlink satellite launches to incorporate the laser link capability. Not long ago, the company finally resumed the launches to begin testing a fully operational version of the space laser technology. Fewer pings to ground stations means Starlink will be able to both expand and improve service, especially in very remote areas, adding SpaceX engineer Yaomi Zhao during the launch's telecast. All future Starlink satellites will feature optical space lasers. The newest batch of Starlink satellites are headed for the Earth's polar orbits to help provide coverage in Alaska and across Scandinavia. The network is currently servicing 100,000 users by beaming download speeds of 50 megabytes per second to 150 megabytes per second. However, there's still another 500,000 users waiting to try out the service. In response, SpaceX is preparing to boost production of Starlink dishes to help fulfill more customer orders. We're currently developing a next-generation Starlink user terminal that can be manufactured much faster and much more efficiently than previous versions, Zhao said. Starlink is currently made up of around 1,800 satellites, but SpaceX has plans to eventually launch over 30,000 Starlink satellites to provide coverage to millions of internet users. These SpaceX lasers are expected to improve how the satellite network relays broadband signals around the world. Ground stations are costly and not without geographical and political constraints on where they can be positioned on Earth. These lasers offer crosslinks between the satellites, which makes faster data transmission possible. Starlink satellites move data quickly among themselves with lasers for fast transmit speeds and low latency. Lasers can provide immense bandwidth thanks to advances in technology that allow more precise control of a beam. These new intersatellite SpaceX lasers will enable the network to operate with fewer ground stations. They'll route data around the constellation between satellites rather than between Earth and space. Fewer hops between the ground and orbit reduces the time it takes for a signal to travel between destinations. The goal is to provide Starlink patrons with improved latency. That improvement should translate to faster internet speeds. A recent launch was the first time an entire batch of 51 laser links made it to orbit, but several were already tested in a handful of prior launches, beginning with a set of 10 that debuted in January 2021. The lasers are something SpaceX has long touted as part of its overall Starlink plan. SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell said during a panel discussion at the Space Symposium that the company has been rushing to develop the laser system since May. It hasn't launched any routers to orbit since June 30th. Two months is an extremely long pause for a program that has, at times, managed near-weekly launches to build up its satellite network. But Shotwell said the pause allowed the satellites launched on September 13th to be completely fitted with laser links and SpaceX hopes the small batch will mark a transition to all Starlink satellites carrying laser crosslinks in the future. Shotwell commented, We were hoping to do so a little bit sooner, but we're working on our laser communication terminals. Echoing previous comments from CEO Elon Musk, Shotwell said at the symposium that SpaceX is concentrating on providing Starlink service to a small market unreachable with conventional fiber connections. She said, 
We're looking forward to continuing to enhance the network by putting more capacity in space and really looking forward to truly connecting those that are very difficult to connect. Customers are great at selecting great service and great value. So we will find out over the next five or so years what is too much and what's not too much. I do believe that there is insatiable demand for data. Yumei Zhao, a SpaceX engineer, hosted the company's launch webcast. She called it a huge leap forward in tech. The mission also marked a homecoming of sorts. It was the first Starlink launch from the Vandenberg Space Force Base in Northern California, a memorable setting for the private spaceflight company. Its first ever test satellites, known as Tintin A and Tintin B, took flight from the base on February 22, 2018. The first stage booster launched and landed for the 10th time, continuing the company's custom of booster recycling. Unfortunately, what the laser-equipped satellites did not do is address the ever-concerning controversy that Starlinks are problematically bright. They have the potential to interfere with professional astronomical observations that have brought us our modern-day view of the cosmos. Although SpaceX has tried to address the issue, the satellite's brightness still has the potential to disrupt observations of the night sky. At this rate, there's little in the way of a future where people can look up and see the sky crawling with satellite lights. Telecommunications expert Tim Farrer said that these crosslinks would make the satellites bigger and heavier, citing this is the reason why there was a recent slowdown in Starlink launches. Starlink's continued expansion has been very rapid and much louded, but its reliability has yet to be tested, Farrer added. He said the Starlink ground terminal's long-term reliability has yet to be determined, and how the dishes will fare against such weather conditions such as rain, snow, or wind for months or even years. The key disadvantage facing Starlink users is that the dishes should have a clear view of the entire sky. Because of this, there must be no nearby trees or buildings. Farrer said this will be a significant issue in further rolling out of Starlink. He added, he would not see the point of cutting down trees just to use the service. Starlink mentioned that the service is ideally suited for areas with unreliable or completely unavailable internet connectivity. Starlink added that it has unveiled a new square-shaped dish that is more durable than previous release terminals. SpaceX had advised customers to position their dishes to get a clear view of the sky. This is because the dishes need to stay connected to the satellites moving overhead. Objects such as tree branches, nearby buildings, or even roofs or poles will block the connection nearby, causing service interruptions. It offers a smartphone app that could scan the sky and determine issues before users utilize the service. Starlink Satellite Service carries an initial sign-up cost of $499 for the hardware and connection, and then subsequent charges are at $99 per month. That said, this is it for today's video. So what is your take on this matter? Tell us in the comments. If you want to see our upcoming videos, ring the bell icon, and don't forget to like our video as well. That's all from my side. Thanks for watching.